In the Vendée Globe, there's something of a human comedy. And the string of characters composing the fleet is its perfect illustration. I am a wave of the sea, and the foam of the wave, and the wind of the foam, and the wings of the wind. My soul is in the salt of the sea, in the weight of the wave, in the bubbles of foam, in the ways of the wind. My gift is the depth of the sea, the strength of the wave, the lightness of foam, the speed of the wind. As two or three of the others, the Irish Enda Koinin is among these competitors, trying to live up to the greatest challenge of their life. So is Eric Bellion, but for the Commun Solom skipper, it seems certain limits have already been reached. I'm clearly a little knocked off. It's a very special moment for me. Because it's a moment I need to accept the fact I'm tired. And what counts is that I rest. Because if I add sails to go faster, I'm going to break something or get hurt. In any case, that's not the intent of the project. I'm resting so to regain my strength and get my engine running. I'll say goodbye for now. I'm really going to try resting to continue the battle. Obviously, Eric Bellion and Enda Okoinin, both at the tail end of the fleet, don't leave the Vendée Globe the same way. Jean Le Cam, well set in ninth position, is jostling with his nearest opponent. Here again, another point of view is expressed. As far as we're concerned, with Finistère Mervan, we are in Camrouille and the Black Knight's company. None others but Thomas Rouillon and our national Jean-Pierre Dick, on board Saint-Michel d'Irbac and Souffle du Nord. So we're in good company. We've left the flying fish region for the albatross now. Different races, different men, different stories. The Vendée Globe could define itself as an ensemble of actions and human behaviors that unfold according to the uncertainties to reach each own's objective. It's Alex Thompson's fourth participation. He came in third in the 2013 edition. There can only be one objective, win the Vendée Globe. With a foil missing, one could think the Brit has lowered his sights. That would be knowing him poorly. The sun is shining, the wind's blowing. 20 knots. Oh, it's time to go fast. But for now, uh, it's a good day. The Southern Ocean and it's sunny. Look at this. Obviously, I'm on starboard tack, which means I've got a foil out over there, over there, which is fantastic. So pleased to be back up on the foil again. My little stump sticking out the other side. I had a look there. It still looks pretty sorry for itself. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to cut it off. At some point, I will have to do that. Second in 2009, second in 2013, him also can't consider anything but victory. At the entrance of the Indian Ocean, Armel Lecliache has over 100 miles delay on Thompson. But Banque Populaire skipper has no equal when it comes to pouncing on his prey. Within 48 hours, he's practically caught up. Well, to be back at contact with Alex, since the start, we've had great conditions for speeding. With that, you had to find the right moment to step on it or watch out for the equipment. That's to each their own. I managed my own way. So all is set for one of these duels that make the great stories of offshore racing. All the actors are here, then there's the South, the uncompromising South, which one's going to have to put up with for a long month. After about three weeks at sea, between the first and the last, the fleet is spread over more than 7,000 kilometers with weather conditions radically different. Didier Costa and Sébastien de Stremo are still in the trade winds off Brazil, while a group of 10 boats labors against headwinds en route to Roaring Forties. Okay, it's a great shake out here. In the waves in the South Atlantic, I have the feeling the boat is gonna disintegrate with each wave, hits hard. But hey, for now, all's okay. Gotta hold on another 24 hours, 
then can put up the spinnaker. Flat out, we're off. More south, at the back of a depression from Argentina, heavy showering for Quito de Pavon. Thank goodness there's the bubble, I tell you. 600 miles in front of him, Thomas Rouillon isn't doing too badly either, flirting with the 450 miles mark in 24 hours and patching up with the duet, Dick Le Camp. I'm happy I've caught up with our two old hands in front. So here, we're at contact. It's great. It's cool. We're gliding and going fast. It's been 48 hours, we're ahead of a front, a depression that's taking us all the way to the Cape of Good Hope. In other words, the door to the Indian Ocean for which one needs to prepare one way or another. All right, last shower by 36 degrees. I can enjoy the water temperature that's still okay. That's for my last shower. Yep, this is for sure the last. In front, in the group ahead of Jan Elias, Paul Meya confirms an excellent start of the race. Fourth in the ranking, he's new to these matters and just switched oceans. We crossed last night the Cape of Good Hope. And I'm lucky it's on a Sunday. So, I treated myself to a croissant this morning. That's where we're at now. Next stage, the Kerguelen Islands and Cape Lewin. Paul Meya followed like a constant shadow by Jérémy Bayou. Maître Coq's skipper is facing new troubles. Deprived of both satellite antennas, he no longer has access to weather information as precisely as his opponents. Consequently, he needs to sail differently. I spend a lot of time at the chart table, making assumptions, making diagrams, whereas it should be done with one click takes up a lot of time and it's not very efficient because here for example I thought there would be 20 23 knots and in the end there are gusts at 30 should have a photo satellite for the gusts of wind that I can't do it's certainly very disabling that's for sure but then again, it's surely less than a rooter amputated by an unidentified floating object. Forced to abandon, Morgan La Gravière knows something about it. He may find comfort for this damage, thinking back at the amazing welcome committee upon his arrival in Cape Town, South Africa. Wow, the ballet. Wonderful. Incredible. We're escorted by whales. I don't know what to say. I'm stunned. It's incredible. The amazement of a demobilized skipper versus a race's day-to-day -day that's gotten tougher and tougher. In other words, the Vendée Globe with all its contrasts. Poor visibility. I'd say about 200 meters. Temperature, I'd say 10, 12 degrees. And we're going fast, real fast. With that, we got the winter clothes out. Cap, fleece jacket, and tights. So to better cope with the temperatures. What Sébastien Jos mustn't cope with easily is the delay building up with the two ahead. Upon the 23rd day of the race, the gap nears 500 miles and doesn't cease widening. Here, we're right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. We pass north of the Crozet Islands. We're heading towards the Kerguelen Islands. We should normally reach by Wednesday. For a few days now, Armel Leclerc has re-endorsed the leader's oil skin Alex Thompson was wearing since November 12th. But for Alex, the contender, hope is eternal. You can see it's already pitch black. Uh, it's a little bit stressful. So uh, stay conservative, try and nip at Armel's heels if I can. I'm on, uh, on the port jibe, so no foil on this side. And see if I can stay in touch until we get to starboard, and then I can do something about it. The Kerguelen Islands, French Southern and Antarctic territories south of the Indian Ocean. A 
a nature reserve of 7,200 square kilometers, and since the 1950s, a logistic and scientific base. The Kerguelen Islands is stage setting for a plate that will remain in our track record. On November 30th, as Alme Leclerc is about to cross the archipelago, a helicopter flies over him and offers us these unprecedented images. Bon populaire, bon populaire from helicopter for contact. Hello to the whole crew of the Nevos. It's nice to hear people like that on VHF. And to have French comrades here, right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Feels great. In the history of the Vendée Globe, it's the first time aerial shots are made in this part of the world result of a close cooperation between the audiovisual production of the race, the National Navy, and the TF1 crew. The accuracy of the information provided by the race direction made it easy to trace Amel Leclerc's position 40 miles north of the Kerguelen Islands. We've been having a nice mano a mano with Alex these last days. It's true, he goes very fast in spite of the damages he's had. As soon as conditions aren't ideal to use his foil, he's able to exploit his boat's potential to go faster and stay in contact. A few hours later, it was Alex Thompson's turn to be filmed. Evidently in great shape, the British chap didn't hesitate to put on a show. Uh, I will come outside and say hello, brother. So, uh, no, I enjoy, uh, it's good to be racing somebody like Carmel. He keeps the pace, uh, he makes me work hard, and, uh, makes it very interesting. While the infernal duet is way ahead, the middle of the fleet, still on the South Atlantic side, is getting ready for virile weather conditions before entering the Indian Ocean. What Koshiro Shiraishi is undertaking is simply breathtaking. I'm preparing to climb up the mast. I'm right at the top of the mast. I replaced this vertical animal meter. It was quite complicated to work on these parts under these conditions. I also reconnected the electrical wires so everything is fixed. As you can see, everything's in order. In the Vendée Globe, there's also something about human greatness. With this extra touch of soul, which surely motivates competitors such as Endau Koinen and Eric Bellion to take up the greatest challenge of their life. The state of mind is good. It's the Vendée Globe's main course that's about to be served. Over worth the lenient latitudes. Now make way to the Great South, and I'll tell you all about it. Bye for now. <laughs>